Good morning, and I'd like to welcome you back again to another day of devotions. And to, today, uh, we're, we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. There we go. And verse 18. Just one verse today. Ver We'll look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, and it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, how much you've done for us and all that you've done that uh, you've provided salvation for us, and we're so thankful for that, Lord. I pray that you'd help us uh, to be thankful, Lord, as we look at your word and how much you've done for us and so much reason to give thanks, Lord. I pray that you'd help uh, my words, that they would honor you, that you would uh, guide my lips and the thoughts uh, that I share today, Lord, that they, they would uh, be according to your word. I pray that it would uh, change the hearts of those listening, that they would be, grow closer to you, that they would become more like Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for these things. Thank you for this time, Lord, and pray this in Jesus' name. Ravensbrück was known as one of the worst German concentration camps during World War II. And uh, there's a lady uh, who went there with her, her sister named Corrie Ten Boom. I'm, I'm confident that a few, a good, a good portion of people would understand or know who that is, but just for a little context, she uh, lived in the, in the Netherlands uh, during the time of World War II, and her family had uh, this three- or four-story house. I was able to actually go there uh, a few years ago when I went to the Netherlands and we went up and they were able to hide away uh, Jewish people and people who the, the German, the Nazis uh, were seeking their lives and, and sending off to, to prisons. And, and so they were holding these people and keeping them safe. But for, unfortunately, uh, they, the Germans... Uh, forces, they, they came and raided the house and they took them to prison. And eventually, Corey, Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy found themselves imprisoned in Ravensbrück in Germany. And there they were disgusted to find uh, that the, these barracks were infested with fleas. They had fleas all over in the bunks and just everywhere, just fleas and fleas and just, just kind of. It's annoying I, in the shop when I work, uh, there's just a little bit of flies and it's a little annoying because you know, a fly lands on you and it kind of makes me twitch and it's just annoying a little bit. And I can't imagine uh, just to be in an area infested with fleas. And so when Corey began to complain, her sister Betsy, she, she insisted that they, uh, instead of complaining that they should give thanks because of this passage I just this verse I just read in everything give thanks for this is the will of Christ Je Christ Jesus this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and finally after Betsy was able to persuade her sister Corey she finally joined her sister in thanking God for the fleas not sure why God had brought them to this place and this circumstance but later uh, several months later, they found out uh, that during, during their time there, uh, the, these two sisters, Corey and Betsy, found out that the camp guards would not enter these barracks because of all the fleas. They were just it was so gross, they didn't want to even go in, so they just left the prisoners alone. And so these, these guards never came in, and, uh, and because of this, Corey and Betsy were able to hold uh, evening Bible studies and able to share the gospel with many people there uh, for the people and the prisoners in there in that, in that barrack. It was then that Corey realized that the very fleas that she was complaining about and she despised were actually God's way of providing for them to have this Bible study and protection from the cruel guards. And when we get so focused on the bad situation around us, we get so focused on the, the, the irritating things that might be around us, we lose focus of the things that God is trying to do and, and work out in our lives. And thankfulness is a good remedy for selfishness. As we become more thankful, 
and we begin to praise God more, we focus less on the negative side of situations and more on the positive. And so why, why can't we be thankful? And I, I see that there's a few reasons, and I'll look at today three of them from the Bible that we can, uh, that we can, be, faithful, we can be thankful. And we can be thankful uh, because of the work of Christ. And this, this thought, this theme occurs throughout uh, the Bible. Um, there's a lot of passages here. It's going to be all over. So if you follow, get your thumbs warmed up and your Bible ready. It says in uh, Colossians 3.15, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. We looked at this uh, verse a few weeks ago about uh, the peace of God. But here, because we are in one body, we're in the body of Christ, we can be thankful. And then also in 2 Corinthians 9.15, it says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. And that unspeakable gift being the atonement and payment for our sins uh, by his son, Jesus Christ. And then in 1 Corinthians 15, Verse 57, it says, But thanks be to God, which giveth, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory over sin and victory over this world because of Jesus Christ. And then in 2 Corinthians, we see Paul writes, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor, savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Paul was giving thanks because he allowed, God was allowing them through Christ to, to triumph and to come overcome those difficulties that they had during their missionary journeys. And so we can be thankful because of the work of Christ, but we can also be thankful because God is merciful to us. And this, this theme of giving thanks because God is merciful, it, it just occurs so many times. I'm going to read these quickly. And I don't expect you to f flip your pages and this quickly, but I'll just read through these. Most of them are almost very similar in, in the phrasing of them. But this phrase uh, we see in, in 1 Chronicles 16, 34, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 106, 1, praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 119, 1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good because his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 107, 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 118, 29. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And then Psalm 136, verse 1. Oh, oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 3, O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 26, O oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. I think it's pretty clear that God wants us to be thankful for his mercy. Uh, that because of his mercy, we have been forgiven, we have been uh, able to go to him and have access to him. Uh, we can bo boldly enter uh, into the throne of grace through Jesus Christ because of his mercy. We can be thankful because of the work of Christ. We can be thankful because God is merciful to us. As the one uh, man said, he said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. We're so th I'm so thankful that God was merciful to me as a a sinner as I was a teen, and God saved me. We can be thank, we can be thankful, or we can give thanks for those who are faithful to the Lord in our lives. And we see, uh, if we look at Romans chapter sixteen, who have hid for my life, laid down their own necks unto whom. Not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. In these next couple of verses, we're going to look at how Paul, he often gave thanks for those who ministered to him and ministered with him. And he always thanked God for them. He says in Ephesians chapter 1, Cease 
uh, verse 16, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And Colossians 1, 3, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 2, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, as we read earlier, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. So today, you might not be able to be thankful for the, the fleas. You might not be able to be thankful for uh, the difficult times. But in, the, in those difficult times, we can be thankful because God is trying to do something and use that difficulty for His glory. Uh, we might not understand it right now, but you can trust God's faithfulness and be thankful that God is working out something that is beyond uh, our understanding, beyond uh, our able ability to uh, comprehend. And so every day, will you stop and give thanks to God for all that He's done for you? Um, today, will you thank the Lord for His mercy, for, his, for Him saving you, uh, for providing Jesus Christ to pay for your sins? Are you going to stop today and thank Him for that? And will you express your thankfulness for others? If you see people uh, who are just go above and beyond and they're, they're just able to help you and uh, be an encouragement to them. You see someone who's faithful to the Lord, serving the Lord, be an encouragement to them. It can be difficult sometimes uh, serving the Lord that uh, it feels all alone and just make a little bit of word of encouragement, being thankful, I uh, can go a long way. A thankful mindset pushes out a complaining attitude. Uh, if we are looking to be thankful every single day and praise God for something every single day, it pushes away this attitude of complaining and, well, I don't have this and I don't have that. If we look at it, things in the other perspective, well, God has blessed me so much. So today it might be a good idea to take, just take a piece of paper and, and write out a list of things that you've been thankful for. We sing the song, count your blessings, name them one by one. But do we actually do that? Do we actually take time to stop and say, well, what has God done for me? What, how, many, how many things has God blessed me with in the past uh, 24 hours even? This whole year, this month, this week, what has God done? And you'd be surprised how much, if you just take a moment and count your blessings and be thankful that God is uh, taking care of you. God is so faithful and we ought to praise Him and thank Him for that. So would you do that today? Would you take some time and write down what God has blessed you with and be thankful and, and go to Him and thank Him for it? Thank you.